Good morning, everyone. Welcome to 8 o'clock service. It's so good to see those of you in audience uh, this morning. And for those of you online, welcome to, uh, to this Memorial Day weekend. We want to um, give honor to those who have sacrificed their lives for us uh, so that we can have our freedoms. And we're so grateful. This morning, we're glad to have uh, Craig Webb, who is Assistant Ex Executive Director of the Hawaii Pacific Baptist Convention to speak to us. And we will also be having a commissioning service for our strategic planning committee. On Friday, we had our first VBS, and I'm sure the children are very happy to be in, uh, back in VBS. It was a wonderful time. And then on Tuesday, we will be starting our Hoosier One um, training. And so we now have a video for you. So who do you decide as your one? I don't know. Um, the more I think about it, there's a couple people that keep coming to my mind. There's the librarian at Lilani Utka. Or... There's the Hana tea worker. Oh yeah, I remember her. Yeah. Or maybe even the girl that was working at TNC. Oh. But I think I'm feeling most led to this one guy I see at the gym all the time. Oh, I think, yeah, I think like, your gym uncle, right? Yeah, the gym uncle. We see him all the time. Who is your one? Come to our train and discover for yourself what a one is. Training starts this coming Tuesday, June 1st. Don't forget to register online or in person. I will exalt you, my God and the, the King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. I will honor your name forever and ever. Let's stand as we sing all hail King Jesus.
Please join me in prayer. Truly, Lord, we exalt you. We exalt your name and praise your name. We adore you, we love you, we thank you. And our Father, on this Memorial Day, we remember those who gave their lives so that we might have the freedoms that we have. And most importantly, Lord, we thank you for our Lord Jesus, who willingly gave himself that we might have everlasting life. Our hearts are full of thanksgiving. And Father, we pray now that you would be with those in our midst who are recovering from surgeries or illnesses, who are in mourning or who are lonely, who have other needs, Lord, that we know not of. Father, we pray that your spirit will comfort them and bring peace. And our Father, we pray for our church here in Pearl City, that truly we might be your lighthouse, that we might shine for you. As we focus on you, Lord, we pray that we might have one mind, one heart, for we pray in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, good morning. Uh, last time I had the privilege of speaking here, you weren't in the building. We were online. And uh, I don't know if you remembered. Hopefully you were watching. Uh, and I would just, uh, it's an honor to be back here again. Uh, thank you, Sterling, uh, for the invitation. And uh, just greetings. On behalf of uh, our executive director, Chris Martin, who I serve under, I bring greetings from all the Hawaii Pacific Baptist churches that stretch from the Hawaiian Islands down to American Samoa and Guam, as well as uh, Tokyo and Yokohama and Himeji, uh, uh, also in uh, Koza and Okinawa, uh, both Calvary Baptist and Koza Baptist Church, and then in South Korea and Seoul, as well as uh, Pyeongtaek, and then over to uh, Bangkok, Thailand, and uh, Manila in the Philippines, and a uh, uh, even there's a church that is uh, provisionally accepted uh, to, to become a part of your Hawaii Pacific Baptist Convention that's in uh, Vietnam. So uh, it's just an honor to be here today as I represent those churches. I do want to invite you to turn your scriptures to 1 John chapter 5. And I know 1 John is a very familiar uh, book, a uh, familiar letter to you all. It was the focus for January, and I know Pastor Sterling said this is one of your favorite passages, your favorite books to, uh, to preach on, and I just felt it's really appropriate for what we're doing today as you uh, commission this new strategic planning team, as we pray for them, as we look for the future for what God's doing uh, in and through First Baptist Church, Pearl City, and which is the people of First Baptist Church, Pearl City. And so we're looking at 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. And I, I just as a reminder, 1 John has a very clear-cut purpose. And it's really, it's the, the tests by which a Christian can know that they're a Christian. Uh, and in, right here in John chapter, 1 John chapter 5, uh, this is not the passage that we're studying today, but it's helpful to know this because it's really the key verse of all of 1 John in verse 13. Look at that, where it says, I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This, uh, this book, this, this letter is written to provide assurance of your salvation, that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know that you're a believer. And uh, when, when John writes here, he, uh, this, this wonderful disciple of Jesus Christ, uh, he's called the disciple that Jesus loved, he talks about this assurance of salvation over and over and over again and he keeps cycling back to, to look at these different themes of who we are as believers. And as we come into this chapter 5, there's a, it's interesting. There's a special note here, especially in verses 4 and 5, that, that only really occur uh, here in this particular chapter. Uh, as, as you've studied First John, as I mentioned, he likes to not only mention something once and then move on, he, he sort of has this circular thing that he does where he comes back and back to the same theme and he expounds on it and he goes higher. But this, this one thing is only mentioned here in this particular chapter in these couple of verses here in 1 John. So let's read that out of uh, 1 John chapter 5, starting in verse 1. He says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. There's that theme. And everyone who loves the Father also that loves the one born of Him. This is how we know we love God's children when we love God and obey His commands. For this is what the love, love of God is, to keep His commands, and His commands are not a burden. So then, listen very closely in these two verses. Uh, verse 4 and 5. Because everyone who's been born of God conquers the world. This is the victory that has conquered the world, our faith. Who is the one who conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Let's pray together. God, I thank you 
for the privilege of being here with my brothers and my sisters uh, in Christ here in the room and also online. God, I just thank you for the privilege of the word going out, a privilege of singing your praises this morning. God, I thank you for this amazing church family. I thank you for the witness that they have here in, in this uh, community and throughout the state of Hawaii and all over the world. And I pray this morning that as we look uh, specifically at these two verses here in this amazing letter, 1 John, that it would be encouraging for the people, that it would be challenging for these amazing people that you've gathered here today, uh, these people that are called by the name Christians and called by the name of being part of the First Baptist Church of Pearl City. We love you, Lord, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So you notice some specific uh, words there in, in those two verses, in verses 4 and 5. You saw the word uh, conquer. You saw the word victor. You saw the word overcomer. Uh, these are all from the same word, and it's an amazing uh, word. We remember that most of the New Testament was originally written in the Greek language, which was the language of the day. And while you don't have to know Greek in order to teach the Bible, there's sometimes that there's some words that are significant. And this is, this is one of those words. It's, it's a great descriptor. And it's important that we understand these. You know, there are, uh, th this is one of the ways that it describes us as, uh, as who we are as believers. And throughout the Bible, uh, we are given many different descriptors and terms that describe who we are as believers. Uh, these are really encouraging for me. Uh, we're called Christians. If you look in Acts chapter 11, it was uh, in, in Antioch that they were first called Christians, little Christ. We're called children. We're, we're called children of God, children of light, children of the day. We're called believers, sometimes called the faithful. Uh, we're, we're called friends of Jesus Christ. We're called brothers and sisters. We're called sheep. We're called saints. We're called the, the holy ones. We're called soldiers, witnesses, stewards. Uh, we're called fellow citizens, lights of the world. We're called the elect. We're called the chosen. We're called ambassadors of Christ, uh, ministers, servants. We're called disciples and heirs, uh, joint heirs. We're called branches on the vine, who's Jesus Christ. We're called members of the body of Christ, living stones by which the temple is built. We're called epistles. We're called living letters. It's messages of God. We're called temples, the beloved. We're called followers. And all of those identify who we are. And, and they're helpful for us. Uh, basically, it takes all of those terms to express the fullness of what it means to belong to God through faith in Jesus Christ. And we're going to focus on this one term that's given for us that's, for me, very helpful. And this is the term that's translated conquerors, overcomers, victors here in 1 John chapter 5 where it says, everyone who's been born of God conquers the world. That's the word. One, uh, that's the word we're looking at. It's the, and it's also where it's translated, this is the victory that has conquered the world, our faith. Who is the one who conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Now, this interesting word is nikao in the Greek, and it means to overcome, it means to conquer, it means to win, it means to defeat, it means to gain glory. And uh, the word nikao is... Uh, where we get the term uh, Nike. And you're familiar with the term Nike, but you may not be familiar that the Greeks loved the word Nike. And they actually had a goddess that was the, the winged victory. And this, uh, this image here is in the Louvre in Paris. And it's a, it's a huge, huge uh, statue. And uh, uh, for the Greeks... 
uh, they believe that she signified victory. She signified victory for the soldiers and for the athletes. Uh, it's also, as we're familiar, where we get the swoosh, uh, Nike. I don't know if any of you have Nike shoes on this morning, but uh, th this also was, was the inspiration behind the company Nike uh, using this swoosh signifying uh, the winged victory and the goddess Nike. Uh, actually, the Greeks believed that uh, victory, real victory, could only be attained by their gods. Uh, they didn't believe mortal. They believed mortals sometime could have, you know, little small victories, but they didn't believe that mortals could be fully unconquerable. Uh, they'd have a triumph here or there, but the, it'd also be mixed with uh, uh, defeat and failure, and only the gods could reach the level of being unconquerable. Now, as we think about this term that's used here, that where John uses it, it's interesting that. Uh, it, it's, he's going counterculture, saying, listen, if you understand this, well, in the culture that you live in, when he was writing this, the culture that you live in, they believed only the gods could have this kind of ultimate victory. And yet, John is saying, he's saying to us today, to every one of you and to me, and to everybody who's watching online, he's saying, listen, if you are a believer, you have this kind of victory. You are a conqueror, and you cannot be conquered. Now, what does he mean by this? Is he saying that if I'm a believer that financially everything's always going to go right, that my health is always going to be good, uh, I was thinking about this kind of victory. Uh, last night, we'd had a day out having some fun with, uh, uh, with my wife. My daughter is in college, uh, and when the dorm got closed down, she moved into the apartment downstairs, and so we talked her into going out and hanging out with us. She doesn't always like to do that, but she did yesterday. And then in the evening, uh, uh, one of the things that we'd, we'd done while we were out is she got some new uh, fins for her surfboard. She's become a surfer. Right, and I am not a surfer. What I do is I have a stand-up paddleboard. All right, I can barely stand up on my paddleboard, but I like to get out. And when I stand up paddleboard, my victory is if I am on a glassy sea at Ala Moana, and I get up and I paddle, and my victory is that I don't fall over and embarrass my family. All right. So Gracie decides, my daughter Gracie decides, she said, Dad, all my friends have gone back to the mainland or they're on other islands and there's no one to surf with. Will you take me surfing? And you can go out on your paddleboard with me surfing. And so we went to Rock Piles, which is out, some of you know where Rock Piles is, out in front of where, I think it's, that's the Prince, Prince Hotel out there. Uh, and we went out. And it was much rougher than she expected. They call it rock piles because it is shallow. And if you don't fall right, you're, you're going to fall into rock piles, right? And so we get out there, and I'm out there, and I'm having fun. I know this is stupid. I'm going out. I fell several times. I was very wet. Uh, I was not even trying to stand up. I'm on my knees. And so we get out to where all the other surfers are catching, the, and there are big waves out there. And Gracie was said to me, Dad, don't catch that wave. That's too big for you. And yet, here I am, thinking I'm unconquerable. And so I'd start paddling. Now, I'm not on standing up. I am on my knees paddling. I'm thinking, I'm going to get this. And it was a big wave. And the way that Gracie describes it is she sees this wave catching me, and she sees me going head first, down and then she sees this huge nine foot six inch I don't know seven foot wide board it's like a boat that I'm on right she sees it flipping up in the air right and then she sees me as it goes that way my foot being dragged toward the board all right now John and I'm still alive right you guys are thankful I was thinking at the time somebody else is going to have to preach today that's not the victory he's talking about. 
He's not saying that if I'm a believer, I'm going to be an incredible surfer. That's not what he's saying. He's not saying that if I'm a believer, my kids are always going to do what's right. He's not saying that that my bank account's always going to be... What is he talking about here? Because it's stunning that he would assign this kind of unconquerability that in the culture was only, uh, only assigned to the gods. Let me tell you, this, this victory is the victory that we have in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the one who is the ultimate victor. And so when he's talking about this victory that we have, when he's talking about this unconquerability that we are conquerors and more than conquerors, he's talking about us in relationship to Jesus Christ because he is the one who is the ultimate conqueror. In fact, it's this same word, this this Nike word that Jesus uses in John 16, 33. He says this. He says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. He says, "You, you will have suffering in this world. And he says, be courageous. I have conquered. That's that word Nike. I have conquered the world. So that's that's where we begin to understand who we are as conquerors. I'm only a conqueror because of what Jesus Christ has done. And now that I am in Christ because of what he has done on the cross where he shed his blood for me and he reconciled me to himself, he chose me and I responded to him in faith and I became his child. Now I, as Paul says in in, uh, Romans chapter 8, 37, he says, and all these things we are more than conquerors through him, through Jesus who loved us. We have, through our faith in Christ, have entered into this condition of being unconquerable. Uh, he, he, the, the term which it says more than conquer, it is hyper conquerors, hyper Nike, hyper conquer. Uh, invincible, unconquerable. Uh, Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verse 38, I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Those are encouraging words for us as believers. And what what is so important for us to understand is that as this church, as the church family commissions this team to look toward the future, we realize that this church is made up of believers in Jesus Christ. That's who you are as the church which means if you are made up of a church that are not only conquerors, but as Paul stated, you are hyper-conquerors, you are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ, then we know that the plans that, that are being made, that they're seeking for, that they're praying about, that they're seeking, and that they'll lay out as goals that they make. God says, listen, in Jesus Christ... You can do those things. He's saying this is not a weak body. This is not a group of people who are relying on their own strength. You are relying on the strength of the God of the universe who sent his son Jesus Christ. And his son Jesus Christ is a a conqueror. He is the ultimate conqueror. And as you are part of him, you also are a conqueror as individuals, as your families, and as a church. So what does that mean? Well, the first thing is, is when we talk about how we overcome, we need to remember that the first thing is that by Jesus Christ, we have overcome the evil one, the deceiver, Satan. And it's so important for us because it's so easy for us to get discouraged, to lose our courage when we are tempted and when we fail. And how much... Does the deceiver, does the evil one want you to think that you are a failure? 
I don't, I don't know about all of you here, but I would imagine that on a regular basis, we hear from the accuser, uh, the deceiver, uh, he's called the accuser of the brethren. And one of the main things that Satan would want you to think is that you are a failure in Jesus Christ. And not to understand that the God of the universe said, I love you, and I chose you just like I chose Israel, and I want, wanted to save you, and I gave you the faith to respond, and you responded in faith, and now you are part of Jesus Christ. You are in Christ. And yet, Satan would love to break you down and to fill you full of doubt and fear and guilt. How can we walk as a conqueror if we are filled with those things? And so it, this is part of our identity, knowing that we have overcome Satan. It's in this same uh, book back in uh, 1 John chapter 4, where he states it very clearly. This is uh, John writing. He says, you are from God, little children. There's a term that we're called, little children. He says, and you have conquered them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. The one who is in the world is the deceiver who is Satan. And he's reminding us that Jesus Christ who is in us is greater than him. And so he's calling us to walk in victory. The second thing is that by Jesus Christ, uh, we have overcome death and we have overcome sin, and we've overcome the law. I'm going to have you write this down, and we're not going to look it up, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting in verse 54, all the way through 58, you, you go back and read that this afternoon, and, and you're reminded that because we have victory uh, over death, because we have victory over sin by what Jesus Christ did on the cross, and, and thus we have victory over the, over the law. And, and so in, in these things, in Romans chapter 6, John says, For sin will not rule over you because you are not under the law, but under grace. And so we walk with confidence in him, knowing that we have been forgiven. We don't walk around saying, oh my goodness, I messed up. God doesn't love me anymore. No, we know that we are under his grace. And so we can walk in obedience when we mess up, and we will. Anybody in here raise your hand saying that I've never messed up this week? No. The words that come out of our mouth, the thoughts. But the key is for us to understand that he's made us more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. And it is the blood of Jesus Christ that covers us so that we still walk in victory. We say, God, forgive me. And we confess, you've said that you've already forgiven me. And when we confess our sins, it's 1 John 1, 9, this same book. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, over and over, he says in this, this particular one also, that not, not only uh, that we have overcome, we overcome Satan, we've overcome death, sin, and the law, but by Jesus Christ, we overcome the world. Three times. He says, everyone who has been born of God conquers the world. This is the victory that has conquered the world, our faith. Who is the one who conquers the world? But the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. I know that over the last 14 months during this pandemic, I felt like our world has been crushing us. <laughs> There have been so many different things in terms of uh, the, the restrictions and figuring out what we do with our government, how we do that as a church, uh, all the, the political divisions that have gone on, the many different challenges that we've had. And in so many of those things, we begin to feel crushed and what we're feeling crushed is by the world. And when we talk about the world, we're talking about the system of, of this world. 
And he's saying that we are not under the weight of the world because Jesus Christ himself has carried the weight of the world. He has overcome the world and is, we are in Christ. This is not our home. We are in him and we overcome the world. He's reminding us, don't become enamored with the world. One of the reasons that I know I struggled so much with the, the pandemic restrictions is I think I was relying too much on what the world could give me rather than relying on walking with God. And so, so often, uh, even for our churches, <laughs> there are things where we thought, okay, we've got this, we've got this down, we've got, you know, we've got our plans, we know what we're doing, we've talked about it. And uh, we began to rely, for many of our churches, we rely on our own self and our own plans. And all of a sudden, this crazy pandemic hits and everything is out the window. We had to learn to do church all over again. We had to really learn to rely on God. And in the same way, as your church enters into this new strategic planning, my challenge is, for those of you who are part of that team, and my challenge is, for you who are in leadership in this church, and my challenge is, for the whole church family, is that we know that we rely fully on Jesus Christ for our direction. We rely fully on His Word to find out what we're supposed to be doing as a church, and we don't rely on the ways of the world. We trust Him. As you make your goals, as you make the strategies, we're relying on Him. My challenge also is for those of you who are part of this church family, is this is a time, especially as, oh, Lord willing, the restrictions start to be lifted more and more, and people are going to be ready uh, to come back to church. We need to be ready. We need to be embracing those, uh, your one, as you're going to be talking about on, on Tuesday. And it's not Sterling. Sterling's not your one, all right? God's already got him. We're looking for somebody else who does not know Christ, that you're one. I'm challenging you, no matter what your, your, the strategy team comes up with, they're going to need you, and the leadership is going to need every one of our church family to be embracing, sharing, personally sharing the gospel, to embracing prayer, to embracing time every day in the Word. These are the foundations of what you are doing and what this church is doing. Um, I'll remind you <laughs> that, that we have this, uh, uh, this amazing God who has rescued us. It says in Colossians 1, He has rescued us from the domain of darkness and He has transferred us into the kingdom of the Son He loves. Um, I want to just pray for the church first. And then I'm going to call, in just a moment, I'm going to call up uh, all of the members that are part of this uh, strategic planning team, uh, as well as I'm going to ask that um, Martin Nagaji is going to come and he's going to voice a prayer. But could I pray uh, with you and for the church right now? Jesus, I thank you that you have made us more than conquerors by the by the blood that you shed on the cross. And God, I pray for this church family. I thank you for the rich, rich heritage that they have. I thank you for the, the heart they have for this community and for Hawaii and for the world. And God, I pray for your blessings uh, over their pastor and their pastors and their leadership, uh, their deacons, and just ask that you would bless this church family as you move them forward. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me invite that team to come up here and uh, invite Martin, who will pray for them.
morning, everybody. At this time, I'd really like to say, take a few minutes just to say, to say, uh, to say a prayer for the team. Um, if you look at these people, I mean, they're all good, strong people. So they, really, they represent our church very well. And um, we just ask you for prayer. So again, can, you bow, can we bow our heads, please? Our Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon this morning. We, at this time, we really like to lift up the team here. And it's, um, it's with, with good hearts, Lord, that we, uh, we, that they, we, we send them to you. Um, we ask that um, you take care of them physically, Lord, um, that their endurance will stay strong, both physically and spiritually. And uh, also grant them wisdom too, Lord. Um, we also ask that um, you just be, uh, just be with them, Lord, and help, help them to follow you, Lord, and as... Um, as Pastor Craig says, Lord, that there, there may be mistakes that may be made, but we ask that you have them follow you, Lord, no matter what, and uh, follow the, your ways and not the Lord's ways, um, not, the, not the world's ways, Lord. Uh, we ask your blessings upon them all, Lord, and uh, we ask that um, you just keep them strong, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Father, you have led us, through your spirit, lead us still. Thank you guys for worshiping with us this morning, both in pers person as well as online. Um, you know, thank you to Dr. Craig Webb, and he's here with his wife Barbara for you know, worshiping with us, but also encouraging us as we 
you know, begin this next chapter in the life of our church as those who you've seen. This is not the whole team, and they're kind of split up between both services. But as they, you know, they, they take on this task of prayerfully and strategically seeking out where it is that God would have us as we try to impact the community here that he's placed us in. But more so, what does this look like, you know, in the years to come? And so I encourage you to, to pray for them. We have, you know, talked with and enlisted churches across the mainland to, to kind of come alongside with us on this journey to, to pray for us in these next few years as we, we, we take on this task. But again, we're, we are glad that you are here. Let me um, offer up our benediction at this time. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, we are so grateful that you've saved us, but, but, but most of all that, we're, that we have this privilege to worship a huge God. And so, Father, as we leave this place, uh, you know, our prayer is that we do so understanding, you know, those words that, that Craig has shared with us, that we are indeed more than conquerors. We are overcomers. And that when we walk out these doors, Lord, that those words are lived out through our faith. I pray for divine appointments where we can just love on people. Again, we give you thanks for the gift of, and the privilege of worship. For we humbly pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good week.